let's take a look at the world's most popular fighter plane, the F-16. The F-16 is a single-engine, multi-role supersonic fighter originally developed for the United States Air Force. While initially designed as an air superiority day fighter, it has evolved into a successful all-weather, multi-role aircraft. Since production began in 1976, over 4,600 aircraft have been built, with about 3,000 operational examples currently serving in 25 countries, and improved versions are being built for export customers. Some of the F-16's notable features include a side-mounted control stick to ease control while maneuvering, a blended wing body, a frameless bubble canopy for much better visibility, and an ejection seat which is reclined 30 degrees to help reduce the effect of G-forces on the pilot. The F-16 also has a thrust-to-weight ratio greater than 1, which provides it enough power to climb and actually accelerate while flying vertically. Additionally, the F-16 was also the first aircraft to implement the use of relaxed static stability with a fly-by-wire flight control system. This intentional instability helps make the F-16 a truly nimble aircraft, and when it was introduced, it could perform maneuvers unattainable by earlier fighters. The specifications for the latest model F-16 are as follows. The F-16 has an internal 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon which is capable of firing 6,000 rounds a minute, which is effective for both aerial and ground targets alike. Additionally, the F-16 has 9 hardpoints for mounting various weapons or equipment. 6 are under the wings, 2 on the wingtips, and 1 is under the fuselage. These hardpoints can accept an impressive mixture of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground munitions, making the F-16 a lethal and versatile fighter. Typical loadouts can include heat-seeking AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, beyond visual range AIM-120 AMRAMs for air-to-air -air missions, and a mix of bombs and external fuel tanks. Although the F-16 is a highly maneuverable airplane, in the modern battlefield, you need to have the best sensors to detect targets and threats alike. Initially, the F-16 was equipped with Westinghouse AN-APG-66 fire control radar, which was designed to be small enough to fit into the F-16's small nose. There have been several iterations of the radar system in the ensuing years, with the latest version being the Northrop Grumman APG-83 radar. The APG-83 system uses technology known as Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA. This system gives the F-16 fifth generation radar capability, which uses hardware and software common to both F-22 and F-35 fighters. Essentially, the APG-83 provides the F-16 with quicker all-weather targeting and greater situational awareness than ever before. The origins of the F-16 go all the way back to the Vietnam War. That conflict revealed both the need for better pilot training and air superiority fighters. Colonel John Boyd and mathematician Thomas Christie developed a theory known as energy maneuverability, which quantified an aircraft's performance. This theory allowed designers to predict aircraft capabilities and design trade-offs. By the late 1960s, Boyd assembled a group of like-minded military and civilian thought leaders, and this new group became known as the Fighter Mafia. The Fighter Mafia group initiated a technology evaluation program which became known as the Lightweight Fighter Program, or LWF. Basically, up to this point, Air Force fighters have been getting bigger, heavier, and more expensive. Case in point, the F-15, which was being developed at the time. And while the F-15 was and is a great airplane, the Air Force simply could not afford to equip all of its squadrons with just F-15s. Additionally, NATO allies such as Belgium, Denmark, and Norway were looking to replace their aging F-104s. Enter the LWF. 
The LWF proposed an inexpensive, lightweight aircraft that could maneuver with minimum possible energy loss, along with an increased thrust-to-weight ratio. Recognizing the need for a less expensive fighter to fill the ranks, the Air Force explored the advanced day fighter concept, which fit the LWF goals perfectly. And to settle any concerns that the ADF program would take away from the F-15s, Secretary of Defense Leisinger made it clear that any ADF order would be in addition to the F-15s. The requirements were for a 20,000 pound aircraft that could operate at speeds of Mach 0.6 to 1.6 and at altitudes of 30 to 40,000 feet. Five manufacturers submitted designs with competition being narrowed down to two finalists, the General Dynamics YF-16 and the Northrop YF-17. The two prototypes would compete in fly-off competitions which began in 1974 and tested various aspects of performance against one another. After intense competition, the YF-16 was chosen by the Air Force. This decision was based on the fact that the YF-16 had superior climb rates, acceleration, endurance, and turn rates. Additionally, the YF-16 used the Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine, the same engine found in the F-15. This would help further reduce costs for both the F-15 and F-16. It was a win-win for everyone. The F-16 was designed from the ground up for 9G maneuvers on full internal fuel. And as the aircraft evolved from just a day air-to-air -air fighter to a true multi-role aircraft, this proved extremely useful. Through a series of acquisitions and mergers, the F-16 today is produced by Lockheed Martin. Most F-16s were built in Fort Worth, Texas, with production recently being moved to Greenville, South Carolina in order to make room for the new F-35s that are being built. For the United States, the F-16 serves in the Air Force, National Guard, Air Reserve Command, and the Air Force Demonstration Team, also known as the Thunderbirds, and even in the U.S. Navy as an adversary aggressor aircraft. Internationally, the F-16 serves with the Air Forces of over 25 nations, as shown here. It's safe to say that the F-16 is legitimately a global fighter that operates in all environments. Usually, the Air Force and its pilots will use the same nickname for an airplane, as in the case with the F-15 Eagle. But, the F-16 actually goes by two and some say even three nicknames. So how did this happen? Back in 1976, the Air Force had a Name the Plane contest for the F-16. After many entries and four years later, the F-16 was officially named the Fighting Falcon by the Air Force. The unveiling of the name took place at Hill Air Force Base in Utah, and local artists painted this logo on an F-16 to commemorate the event. The pilots, however, had already given the F-16 their own nickname. You see, Hill Air Force Base was the first F-16 base, and one of the proposed names was Viper. As to how the pilots came up with the name Viper, Lieutenant Colonel Pat Gums McAdoo recalls it best. At the end of the runway, the F-16 did resemble a Cobra or something as it approached you. However, I think Northrop already had taken that name for the YF-17. We all voted and Viper came in really high. Seems that there was a series on TV that had Colonial Vipers flying off of the Battlestar Galactica. In any case, the generals didn't want a plane named after some snake. Even after the Fighting Falcon name became official, Pilots and crews who worked on the plane referred to the F-16 as Viper. In fact, today, the award for excellent airmanship in the F-16 is named in memory of Joe Bill Dryden and is called the Sempre Viper. And finally, the F-16 does have one other nickname, though not in widespread use today as when the airplane was first introduced. You see, the F-16 was the first aircraft to rely entirely on electrical signals to relay flight commands. And because of this, it was known as the electric jet. So, which is it? Fighting Falcon, Viper, or electric jet? Well, it depends on who you ask, but today most people refer to the F-16 as the Viper, especially those who fly or work on it. When the F-16 was first introduced, it served as a first response frontline fighter during the Cold War. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Air Force, National Guard, and Air Force Reserve flew the F-16 during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and also in the Balkans during the late 1990s. F-16s have also patrolled the no-fly zones in Iraq along with serving during the wars in Afghanistan, Operation Enduring Freedom which began in 2001, and Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom which began in 2003. 
F-16s also took part in the intervention in Libya. It's amazing to think that with its already storied history, the F-16 may only just be getting started. Since there are still F-16s in production, and with structural and capability upgrades in progress, the F-16 can operate to 2070 and beyond, giving it a potentially 100-year operational lifespan. With its multi-mission capability and relatively inexpensive operating costs, some people argue the F-16 is the best all-around airplane in the Air Force today. What do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you press the bell to get notified when the next airplane bio comes out. Have an idea for a fighter or airplane you'd like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.